So today we're going to add uh, five new blueprints and we're going to be able to pick up some items. So straight away, I'm going to right click and create myself a new folder for the inventory. We're going to have a couple of blueprints inside of here. And the first one we need is a blueprint structure because, well, our variables, our items will have multiple variables. So I'm going to call this S inventory and this thing is going to hold a couple of properties for us. So let's go to the structure. We have the member zero and this is going to be the name. And this is going to let's make this into a string. Let's add another variable. Let's call this, let's say, icon. We're going to make this into a texture 2D. Texture 2D. And the last one for this one is just going to be a mesh. And I'm going to be using a static mesh for this. So we have a static mesh, like so. Okay, so we have our structure ready to go. And then based on this structure, we're going to create a actual item database. So we're going to go to the miscellaneous and go to the data tables. And we're going to select our newly created S inventory structure. Hit OK. And let's call this item database. Pop this open. And this is going to be our item database. So it's going to be based on the same logic. So we're going to have a name, icon and mesh for every single one of the entries. So we can click add for the first one. And what is important is that we change the row name so we can actually double click this over here and we can rename this to let's say planet one and then we're gonna give a name over here so we're gonna say uh, blue planet and icon is gonna be something some kind of a normal map whatever so it's just blue colorish something and we don't have a sphere because we don't show the engine content and then if we do we can use a editor sphere like this for item number one and then we can just duplicate the items and rename them to let's say this is going to be planet two we're going to say that this is the orange planet we're going to make the texture whatever this one and duplicate this once more and call this planet number three. We're going to call this, I don't know, red planet, whatever. Or maybe, maybe let's make this green planet. Okay, so we have that all ready to go. Now we need the actual pickups themselves because only now we have only the list of our items. So we're going to go create ourselves a new blueprint actor. Let's call this uh, BP pickup. Open this up. And inside of here, let's add ourselves a new static mesh like this. Let's give it some kind of a default shape for now. Let's give this a background cube, uh, not the background cube, maybe just the regular whatever cube like this. And now inside of here, let's add a variable which is going to actually hold the values for us. So let's call this item and this is going to be a data table row handle like this so what basically this now does is if we save this and it's a data row uh, tape uh, data table row handle we can select our data table so our item database and then we can select any of the entries that is inside of our uh, database so if we have a quick look at the item database we can see we have three entries and we can pick any of those entries over here so by default i'm going to have it at planet one like so. And then inside of the construction script, real quick, let's just change the static mesh so that it would update itself automatically based on what item it is. So we're going to grab our item. We're going to grab our static mesh. We're going to go and set the static mesh. Static mesh like this. And then we can get the item. We can actually split this to get a data table row, which is going to return us the information from the database. Because as of right now, you noticed probably that inside of the variable item itself, we only specify the data table and the row. And once we use get data table row, we actually get the other values like the name, icon, and mesh. So if we connect both of these up like so, and then we do break, as inventory, we can retrieve our mesh. So we can do it like this. And now you will see once we compile, it's gonna turn into a sphere because our planet one is actually a sphere. So if we would change this to a floor mesh, save this and recompile this, you can see now it is a floor mesh. 
Okay, so now we have our pickups, but if we bring them into the level, there's not really much we can do about them. They're a little big, but that doesn't matter for this video. Um, but we need some kind of a method so that we can actually pick those up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the pickup master and I'm actually going to add another component called a sphere collision. And I'm going to make sure that this sphere collision is actually way bigger than the mesh itself. So we can actually enter this area and once we do enter this area we're going to be able to pick uh, this uh, pickup up so we're going to select our sphere we're going to scroll down till the very bottom we're going to do a begin overlap event and then from the other actor we're going to go ahead and cast to our third person character and we're going to be able to then grab our item and add to our uh, player, but our player doesn't really have an inventory right now. So let's go ahead and let's set a, up a really really quick inventory So inside of our character blueprint what we can do is just simply add a variable called inventory Which has to be a data table row Handle and this needs to be an array of entries like this And there we go. We have our inventory variable all ready to go what we can do over here is we have two options. We could create a function inside of the character, which we are actually going to do. So we're going to call this add item. And this is going to have an input called item. And this is going to be our data table row handle. And then from over here, we're going to grab our inventory. We're going to do add and we're going to be adding this entry right here. There we go. And we have our add item like this and then let's go ahead let's go back inside of our bp pickup and then from over here we can do add item function that we just created and provide the item variable like this and once we have done this uh, it would be good to check if we picked it up or not but well since this is single player at this point i'm just simply gonna destroy the actor once everything is done because everything should be just fine at this point as long as it's single player there we go so we can walk up to this and it should be gone good so let's set up more pickups so we're gonna have pickup number one we're gonna have pickup number two and the pickup number three so if we select on any of them go to the details we can't really change the value of the item and that is because we haven't exposed it so if we would select our item and make this instance editable you will see that now inside of the level if we select the blueprint we can actually change the item values so this is going to be the planet number two and this is going to be planet number three so we can see we have one two and three so we have three different items okay so far so good now we need to create the ui so we can actually see those items and so i'm going to go and right click user interface widget blueprint and user widget and i'm going to call this ui hud so now inside of here let's add a canvas panel inside of this canvas panel let's add a scroll box inside of the canvas panel i'm going to bring this to roughly bottom middle like so and then i'm going to make sure i re-anchor this to the middle and maybe like this rather and then let's do offset zero offset zero position y is zero so this brings it below so we want to go ahead and bring this up so let's say position y well size y is going to be 150 and then position y is going to be minus 150 and therefore now it's going to be on top and we could do some offsets like 150 over here 150 over here so it's not entirely full screen and also i want to make sure that it scrolls from one side to the other not up and down so we're going to change the scroll bar uh, orientation from vertical to horizontal like this good so we have this thing done uh let's call this let's make this into a variable rather let's go inside of our graph and on the event construct we can go ahead and cast to the third person character we can get owning player pawn and then from here we can get the inventory and we can do a loop for each so that we would create all the items and then we're gonna go ahead and whoops we're gonna create a widget 
that is going to be our item and then we're going to grab our scroll box and we're going to add a child to the scroll box which is going to be the item widget which we don't have yet so let's go ahead and let's make one back inside of the inventory folder i'm going to create another widget user widget and we're going to call this ui item let's open this guy up and i'm going to give this a size box so that i can set it to a predetermined size obviously you can use whatever size you like uh, since i made my 150 high then i'm going to do something like uh let's do 125 by 125 like this and inside of here let's just add a border simply for the image itself so then we're gonna go to the brush and we're gonna create a binding for the brush in the appearance section over here now we're gonna need to go ahead and make a slate brush and we need some info for uh, this guy so let's go ahead let's create a variable and let's call this item a data and this is going to be the s inventory structure straight away we don't need the full uh, item info inside of this widget so we're going to only use the item data which we can then break not not member not make a member but we want to break and then we can use the icon as the image like this there we go so that's good. Now we need to make sure that this variable right here is actually made exposed on spawn and instance editable so that we can edit this from the outside. Okay, so back inside of our UI HUD now, we can select the widget class, so our UI item, and boom, we have our item entry available. And then that means that from our loop body, we can actually break these two to get the data table row like this. Connect the row name, connect the executions up, and then the out row is the item data, like this. Now we need to display the widget on our screens. So real quick, we'll go back to the third person character inside of the event graph. Let's do keyboard key I. Do the I key. And over here, what we're gonna do is, so we're gonna create a widget and we're gonna grab the UI HUD and then we're gonna go ahead and promote this to a variable and I'm gonna call this UI underscore HUD like this so what we could do is actually bring this to the begin play first so once we start the game we create the widget but it's not visible and then whenever we press the I key we're gonna go ahead and grab this and we're gonna check is visible and then we're going to check if it is and then if it is we're going to grab the widget and we're going to do remove from parent on true and on false we're going to go ahead and add to a viewport like uh, this so now we're going to be able to toggle this on and off so now let's give this a shot let's pick up some items and there we go we have our items but we have an issue that they are multiplying individuals the scroll bar works but we have too many items generated every time when we press the i key so back inside of our ui hud let's fix this real quick we're going to also need to have some kind of a refresh thing as well so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab the scroll box so where the items are filled into so the placeholder basically and we're going to clear the children from it so that that uh, that box would get cleared so it's completely empty and then one more thing i want to do is i actually want to create a custom event and i will call this refresh items and I'm just going to simply plug that in over here as well so that whenever we pick up an item so that the UI would be refreshed as well. And we need to do that inside of our third person character whenever we add an item to our inventory. We want to grab our UI HUD and we want to do refresh items. So the function from our widget. So now if I compile and save everything... We should be able to open up our inventory and run around and get the info live 
like we do. There we go. So we have an inventory system somewhat working. I will do some adjustments off screen, create some nicer meshes and all that stuff, add some textures. And then we're going to be able to use these items to unlock our puzzles. So let's say maybe we're missing these cones or whatever. We can pick those up, place them over there, and then we will be able to interact with the puzzle.